Economy picking three notes per string scales can be a really powerful technique if you can get it down. And there are some really simple rules that can help you. Uh, and I've not seen very many people spell this out. So that's what I wanted to focus on this week. So what I'll be covering are the, the two simple building blocks that you need in order to be able to economy pick three notes per string scales, how to establish them on the neck, how to start the scales off, how to change direction with them as well, and also what to do if you get out of sequence between your left hand and right hand, how you can re-establish the, the scales again. Now with this, again, I've created a PDF and I'll attach it to the description field. So feel free to download that. Just like before, I'm not harvesting email addresses or anything like that. So just help yourself to that. Just click on the link and it'll download. So let's start with the, the basic building blocks. So when it comes to economy picking three notes per string scales, there are really only two basic movements and they're these. So that's the first one, which is just a little three note movement. And you can see I start with a downstroke and I follow through with that downstroke on the next string and then I play an upstroke for that final note. And the other movement is really this reverse. So I start with a downstroke on the upper note, then up and then a sweep through for that final upstroke. And if you take any of the either of those ideas and we apply them across the strings, if you use the first one, you can see there's the little three note movement. And let's start moving it across the strings. And you can see it creates an ascending line. And similarly with that second one, there it is again. And if we start moving that across the strings, have a little descending line which is really useful. Now these really rely on a particular combination of upstrokes and downstrokes and the notes that you play so it's worth memorizing this stuff. So for example I like to start phrases with downstrokes so the the, the movements that I, I most remember are, are for example when I'm ascending I know if I start any string with that first note in the group of three and I start with a downstroke, it'll create an ascending line. Yeah, so that's how I know, and, and it doesn't matter which string. Just as long as it's that first note in that group of three, then I know it'll create an ascending line. And similarly, I can do it with that third note as well. Yeah, and again, it doesn't matter which string. And if I want to create a descending line, starting with a downstroke, I know to use that middle note of the group of three. Yeah. And then that lines everything up and I can play the scales. And I can do exactly the same thing with upstrokes. It's just the rules invert then. So if I'm, if I'm working with upstrokes, then I start with that middle note of a group of three if I want to create an ascending line. And if I want to create a descending line, then I start with either the first note or the third note of a group of three. Yeah, so, and again, any string, as long as it's that first note or that third note. And everything will line up. Okay, so we've got the scale in one direction, either ascending or descending. What about changing directions? Well, one of the things Frank Gambali talked about in his speed picking course was that what you need to do is to play an even number of notes on a string, and when you do that, you can change direction without breaking this kind of economy picking flow. And there are practically three different ways that I know of of doing that. So let's cover those right now. Okay, so let's explore changing direction with a simple line. So there's my little phrase that I want to use. And you can see I changed direction at the bottom and the top. 
And if you look at these strings in detail, you can see that top string has five notes and similarly with that bottom string when I'm changing direction. And that doesn't really work for economy picking because as, as Frank Gambale was saying, you need four note, four, uh, an even number of notes on a string in order to change direction. So what can we do? Well, the first thing we can do is just drop one of those notes and that turns those five notes into four. And when we do that, we have a phrase that fits nicely on the net using economy picking. So that's one thing we can do. Second thing we can do is we can add a note or we can repeat one of those notes. So the easiest note to repeat is the highest note and the lowest note. And that does exactly the same thing. And then the final thing we can do is kind of building on this idea. So instead of repeating that note, how about we change position? And then that gets rid of that repeat. So. So that's another way of doing it as well. And it doesn't matter whether I change position on the first note or the second note or the third note, it's enough to give an even number of notes on that string. And when you do that, it changes the direction of the phrase, which is a really useful little trick to know about. Okay, in the real world, uh, you're obviously playing these lines in the middle of other lines as well. And it's very easy to find your picking getting out of sequence. In fact, you've got about a 50-50 chance of either being lined up to be able to play an economy pick line or to have your pick going in the wrong direction. So what can you do about that? Well, re-establishing the line is probably a lot easier than you might think. So let's have a look and I'll see if I can demonstrate. Okay, so if you find your picking is back to front, so you're playing upstrokes when you want to be playing downstrokes and vice versa, the easiest thing to do is to just alternate pick that string and you'll find when you transition to the next string everything lines up so you can do economy picking again. And this is a really useful little trick to be aware of. So for example, if I'm playing this little ascending line, as you can see, everything lines up because I'm starting with a down stroke and I'm starting on that first note in the group of three, so that's great. What about if I'm on an upstroke, if somehow land on an upstroke on that first note in the group of three, what do I do? Well, I just alternate pick this first string. When I do that, I go up, down, up, and that sets me up for a down stroke on the next string and I can up economy pick, yeah? And it, you can do exactly the same at the top as well. So if I'm playing a descending line, I'd, I'd normally start maybe with an upstroke on that highest note. Yeah. But let's say I'm out of position and I, I find myself playing a downstroke on that. I just alternate pick. So I go down, up down and that sets me up with an upstroke on that next string and then I can economy pick all the way across the neck from there and actually this gives me a neat set of rules for just just playing ascending and descending lines between any any pair of notes on the neck and what what I do here is a, is something that I call bookending and all I mean here is you know, you do something at the start, you do something on the lower note that you change direction, and you do something at the higher string where you're changing direction, and everything in the middle is just economy picking. So, for example, a, a bookend would be just that little five note phrase. Yeah, and you find if you, when you're playing a scale, you end up with this up, down, up, down, up, and then you're ready to economy pick all the way across the neck. And at the other end, you've got that similar five note phrase coming the other way. 
So you go down, up, down, up, down, and that sets you up for an upstroke on the next string. And that's why I call it bookending. You do, you have, do one thing on the, the lowest string, one thing on the highest string, and that's all you need to do in order to be able to economy pick everywhere else. And you'll find there are the three different book endings depending on whether you want to play three notes on a string, two notes, or just one. Yeah, and so there's just sort of six little movements to learn and, and everything in between is an economy picked line, yeah? And you just use the book endings where you change direction. And again, it doesn't matter which string you change direction on, you just use one of the book endings and that's all you need to be able to start moving between one note and another note, economy picking. And what happens when you get down to two strings? You just play in the book endings. Three strings, you can see book ending on the lowest and the highest string and a economy pick through that middle string. Four strings, and you can see book ending high and low and I just economy pick through two strings. And that's it. Okay, so let's pull together some simple exercises. Okay, so the first thing to do really is to just start getting used to these little three note movements and turn them around and then start pulling them across the strings. to the feel of them on the neck and the picking of them. Once you've got that kind of working, the next thing to do is to start thinking about these in 16th note phrases, because at the moment everything sounds very, very much in groups of three, in triplets. So just pick a, a little 16th note line, and I've, I've put one in the, in the PDF. And just get used to playing that with a metronome, just to get used to that, that 16th note feel and, you know, come up with your own, obviously. And then finally, just start playing around with changing direction a little bit more. You know, have a go at playing around with these bookends and just start just free forming between lines. As I say, just think about, you've got the book ending on one side of the shape, you've got the book ending on the other, and you just sort of economy pick in between them. And every time you change direction, use one of the book endings to do that until, until it becomes second nature to you. Okay, that's it for this week. Um, let me know if you want me to follow up on this video and take this to, to its next stage either by dropping a comment or hitting the like button on the video and I'll follow up on it. Anyway, that's it for this week. I'll chat next time. Goodbye.